us specifically how you can actually take an object or an actor from within your scene and convert it over and start to build a blueprint based on that actor. Now, the only thing that I've changed from my previous video is my Hello World blueprint. I did remove it from the scene here. From previous videos, if you recall, up at the top here under the list of world blueprints available, you also, depending on what type of items you have actually or actors in your project here, it'll depend on how this list looks. So you can see actually there's my Hello World that I created, but because I included the base uh, elements here as far as the starter content is concerned, I also have things like the ceiling light, the wall scone, etc. So for instance, if I click on the wall scone, you can actually see here as far as the construction overall, notice that it really doesn't matter as far as interactivity or events, which is why it actually goes to the construction script or the construction function as far as setting those lights. And then you can kind of see the end element here in the viewport. So what if I wanted to have a little something a little bit similar but maybe with a different type of static mesh or even let's go one step further here and let's go ahead under starter content why don't we take a look at a particle so in the starter content you do also it now includes several particle elements for you so let's go ahead and grab fire so we'll have a little bit of fire in our scene here and so the particle system is going here and what you can actually do is keeping the object or actor highlighted i can actually come up to the drop down and for blueprint class we could choose to convert this so you're going to get a pop-up window here and let me expand this out so you can see and what it's doing is it wants to make a brand new subclass as far as using that actor's reference which is an emitter now it wants to actually store it in particles if you wanted to you could click if you absolutely want to keep it with your blueprints you can so i'll call this bp fire and let's call it particle i'll go ahead and say select and notice now it's popped up here number one you can see the new blueprint class and it's got a bit of a different icon since we're using a particle system but also notice now here inside of my working window first off i want to show you on the side here as far as the particle system components what unreal has done for me is it has gone through and actually generated everything as far as the baseline for what is needed for this particle system it has the same elements as its counterparts as far as a blueprint system is concerned. You've got the construction, but you also have the event graph. And one of the things that I want to consider when working with this blueprint, though, is whenever somebody go, walks into it or the player walks into it, I want it to say, ouchie fire. So this is where the component organization panel here on the left hand side comes into play. Because if I actually choose as far as what is embedded inside of this component, I can actually add additional components. Now, as you can see, you have a ton of different components that you can add in here, but more specifically, I wanna add a collision area. So I'm gonna throw in a box here. And what I'm gonna do is come back to the viewport, and this is why your viewport can become really important, is because now you can kind of see down there. I have the box, but I can also still, using my controls, I can change the overall size of the box. Now, with a particle system, I might not be able to get this perfect as far as the positioning here, but you can see as far as being able to, you know, kind of try my best there. So now I have this collision box that is associated with the particle system. And the particle system though, however, whenever I turned it into a blueprint, notice I only have these two options as far as events that can occur, as far as when we begin play or when the level is loaded, but also to ticking every time as far as the frames per second.
Now, this is where the box element comes into play here. Because if you go over to details, and this is something that can take you very far, but also you gotta get comfortable working with. So if you scroll all the way down, based on the component or asset that you are working with that is attached to your blueprint, you will have new event options appearing over on the right-hand side here. So notice that I have box highlighted and notice all these new events I have. More specifically, what I wanna work with, and honestly, it's a pretty common one that can get you going pretty far, is the on-component begin overlap and the on-component end overlap. The component can be a player character. So if I choose the plus symbol next to this, this is gonna take me into the event graph and notice now, let me go ahead and scroll out a little bit here. You can actually see so there's those event tick, event begin play, but now I have this new on component begin overlap box because I don't actually want this playing right as the level loads, but likewise, I don't want it ticking over and over. I only want the interactivity to occur with the box collision when some type of component, in this case, the player interacts with it. So I'm going to go ahead and add an execute and we are going to go ahead and do a print text and we'll change it from hello to ouch fire hurt in all caps. So I'm going to go ahead and compile. I'm going to go ahead and save. Now, once again, I'm going to go ahead and leave this open. However, this time in comparison to my hello world where I had to drag and drop it, because I selected the particle system in the scene and then came up to the dropdown and chose to convert to a blueprint class, Unreal has already made the updates for me within the scene. It's a little hard to see because of the orange on orange, but now that collider box is now present. So if I go ahead and hit play, so right now you can see it's simming. Uh, in the blueprint, uh, nothing's really happening because I'm not interacting, but if I run over here, you see now how down at the bottom there, it's interacting whenever the user enter enters. And you can see, ouch, fire hurt popping up. It's kind of light, but it's popping up on the left-hand side. But again, using that simulation element there as far as showing the blueprint interaction, that's how I know that the connection has been made. So that's just another example that I wanted to take time and show folks on how you can generate, based off of an object, you can start to create your own interactive assets. While I used a particle system here, using something like a 3D model or a component can work just as well. The only things that you have to be aware of are things such as collision, like for example, running through a tree that might not be very realistic. However, as you continue to practice and utilize blueprints, you might be able to do something where if the user runs into the tree, they lose five life. So there's a lot of flexibility whenever it comes to working and creating blueprints.